This part of the year is a special part for many families around the globe. It's a time where children and adults alike celebrate together and laugh together. What could it be? There's a lot to pick from Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, hell, to Boxing Day for those weird Canadians. And Christmas Eve for those who want something smaller in their lives. No, 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 we don't celebrate the boring generic holidays that the mindless population celebrates without questioning the morality of the origins of each holiday. No, instead, this is a special time of the year when the Mat Bat Mat, a small, unoriginal, and especially dumb YouTuber releases a Christmas special that brings joy to all 159 fans of his, which could also include you if you subscribe. Now, it's time to see what he and one of his best friends are doing at this very moment. Strap in, it's gonna be a long one. Video games are pretty cool, huh? That's why I'm at my best friend's house to indoctrinate him. Why are you here? For Christmas, of course. You're three days early. I prefer to think that I'm 362 days early for next year's Christmas. Well, when you say it like that, I gotta let you in. Come on in. Well, I got a present for you straight from my garden. You live in a desert. I got a coupon from God. You're an atheist. I prefer to call myself uneducated. So I get no real present this year? Oh my god. <laughs> Don't ask. So, I was looking through my collection earlier and realized I had a bunch of games that I didn't play at all. So, I got you this. What? You got me this? I had to be a bitch boy and not accept my beautiful gift. You know, I had a feeling this might happen, so I had a video pre-made for this exact situation. Hi. Have you ever found yourself in this situation? It's a beautiful winter day outside and today just happens to be Christmas. You get your best friend a nice Christmas gift, but they just throw it out the window without a second thought. Well, if they don't like your original gift, then that's the perfect solution for you. Introducing Light Fairy Tale Episode 1. It's an indie JRPG developed by Nico Work. Well anyways, Light Fairy Tale Episode 1 is great. It has a short runtime, a bite-sized approach to gameplay, and has a short title. Anyways, enough of all that bullshit. Now, it's time to head into the real meat and potatoes of what I wanted to talk about. Like Fairy Tale is a game that takes inspiration behind quite a few games, and that's an awesome thing. Lots of the best games ever made are inspired by another piece of media, and Light Fairy Tale is no exception. When you first boot up the game to see the logo, or when you properly head into the game and see the setting for the story or the gameplay, it's quite obvious to see that it's Final Fantasy VII, which is a legendary RPG that nearly everybody knows of. While I myself have never completed Final Fantasy VII, well, I haven't beaten any Final Fantasy game. I did enjoy my time with it, especially with Midgar being amazing. I've also dabbled in Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis and Final Fantasy VII Remake. Anyways, enough about Final Fantasy VII. Obvious connections aside, I feel like Light Fairy Tales really stands out on its own. It has this really cute art style, a nice and effective combat system, and a simple story that doesn't overstay its welcome. It's short and sweet, which is something that I like every now and again after I play 100 hours of Xenoblade. There is so much charm in this game. Character models are so so damn cute, their chibi looks so cute, and they're gorgeous. I have to give it to the developer, Nico Work. Since this was their first release, and the quality here is really great, and you don't see this with other indie developers on their first release. Oh, and also, the game is gorgeous and runs well on the Switch. The details in the environments and the enemy designs are great. A lot of the time, you'll see some indie games struggle since the developers don't have the time to optimize, but Nico Works here did a great job at making sure that this experience was flawless. Many say that in order to be a good game, it needs a good story, and uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. In order to be a good game, you need cat girls. So, what's the story for episode 1? Is it as grand as a Final Fantasy title, or is it light on that and focus more on the charm like Dragon Quest? Well, it's somewhere in between as the title should indicate. While this is a fully fledged game, it's also the first game in the series. So while the story itself isn't huge yet, that's okay, it's building up for future titles. I mean, do we really need a grand story? I'm perfectly fine with moments where Kukuro confesses to Haru that she ate his jumbo chocolate. What is here is pretty good, I'd say. The game opens up with Haru, the protagonist, sleeping, and getting woken up by Kukuro, his best friend. Throughout the story, we see them both travel throughout the city, ruled by an impressive government. I won't say much more since while the story isn't too deep, it's still worth experiencing on your own. 
As with a lot in this game, the combat's pretty simple, and I enjoy it for that. It's a turn-based RPG with two party members, with them being Haru and Kukuro. What a surprise. While there are random encounters, there are only in select areas, and after a set amount in these areas, you get to move on for the rest of the game with no more encounters, and I love it. It's small, but something I would love to see in more games. If there's anything I do have to complain about the combat, it's that I felt like the final boss went on for way too long, and that the sound effects can sound weird sometimes. But overall, it's hard to complain when the game is bite-sized and awesome. So, what can you take away from Light Fairy Tale Episode 1? You can't go wrong with it. It's a cheap, bite-sized JRPG that's sure to please both hardcore and casual fans. Probably. And it certainly did satisfy me. I really do think everyone should give it a try since the developer is so talented. And not because they followed me back on Twitter, but you really should check it out. So, how are we feeling about the game? I just want to play Splatoon, come on man. Come on, what else could you ask for in a video game? Murray clearly outshines everything in this game. You son of a I'll kill you! Oh, oh shoot, I got a call from someone. Hey, what's up? I'm trying to inflict first degree murder here. I'm here to remind you to finish East 9. It's been nearly a year since you started the game. Well, excuse me. I'm too busy trying to figure out what to get my friend for Christmas. And strangling him. If you promise to play East 9, I have a game that's conveniently ready in situations like this. I agree to play Ease 9. This is why I like to call it dishonesty. I would call our friendship dishonesty. Wait, you got somebody else? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna tell you that I got somebody else. VVV, VVV, is a project by one Terry Kavanoff, who has created dozens of games in his career, but this one always felt to me like his magnum opus. Released in 2010, the style of the game is based heavily on older Commodore 64 titles, while crafting what could be the simplest game concept, but one with so many possibilities. You only have one button, and it makes you flip. Well, to be specific, flip your center of gravity. With this ability, you're able to use both the floors and ceilings to traverse the entire game world, discovering secrets and rescuing your crew who were lost in a teleportation accident. Mix that with beautiful pixel-based graphics, weird and funny titles for each screen done by Ben Foddy of Gang Over It fame, and a soundtrack filled with amazing chiptune compositions delivered by Magnus, and you have a classic that, to me, still feels greatly underrated. It's a super short but fun as heck game with surprisingly high skill ceiling. Please check it out if you haven't yet. It's available on many different platforms. You've been constantly showing me games that I have no interest in is gonna work. Did you not pay attention? You can change gravity! I do that every day, if you count backflips. But you're a Splatoon fan. Why are you like this? You are impossible to please, oh my gosh. Can you please get this over with? This stick is getting old really quickly. You know what else is getting old quickly? This little game called- SHUT THE F*** UP! It's... Looks like I'm gonna have to change tactics. What? Don't look at me like that. No. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> That's what my mom said when she first saw me, but you don't see me saying that out loud. Just get it over with. So I know this guy. Just get it over with! Good idea. Merry Christmas and totally random request, but I need a favor from you. Depends on a favor. Well, I need you to talk about a game and... Ah, is this the time you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, this is the time I was talking about, which is happening right now. Alright, give me one second, just gotta do this. So, a couple years ago, I found my little brother playing this game called Suicide Guy. I figured it was just a shit post of the game, until he recommended it to me. I'm like, my brother never really recommends me games. Huh, that's weird. So then I play it for myself, and... I find it to be a pretty good game. It's short, really ain't taking like an hour to beat, but it's short and sweet, is what I'm trying to say. The main premise of the game is, in the title, you just gotta commit suicide, and you win. Okay, that's giving it probably a different message. You're probably seeing something way different in your head than I'm kind of saying, oh my god. It really is hard to talk about, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, but no, for real though. Suicide Guy is a game where you play as a dad, I'm just gonna call him a dad, even if he isn't, who was on a couch one day watching TV, but he falls asleep as all dads do. But while he fell asleep, he held a bottle of beer in his hand, 
this bottle of beer started falling out of his hand as he fell asleep. So he has to wake up before that beer hits the ground. And in order to do that, you gotta commit suicide. Matt, I hope you have fun editing this video. But anyway, that back to the game. With Suicide Guy, you go through these puzzle levels, trying to progress through them in order to kill yourself in said levels. You have your average temples, lighthouses, laboratories, where you just gotta kill yourself. You liking this, Matt? But yeah, it's a pretty nice game. The game ended up getting two sequels, one of which just came out a few months ago, and the other came out a few years ago. Well, called Sleeping Deeply, Lost Dreams. I have not played Lost Dreams yet, but I have played Sleeping Deeply, and I would say it's pretty good. I do highly recommend trying out uh, at least the first two games. Obviously, I can't speak for the third game, but I do recommend trying it out if it is under the same gameplay style. These games are short, but they're pretty good. Like I said, they're nice puzzle games to get your mind off of things. I do highly recommend them. And that's really all I can really say. I don't really want to say too much because I do want to leave some of the surprise factor in for these games. But, I mean, they are really, really short and they are very, very simple. I don't really know how to stretch this out anymore. <laughs> so, you know what, Matt? I'm just gonna tell- I'm just gonna tell you right now. Have fun. I hope you're having a lot of fun editing this because I know you're gonna have a lot of fun trying to figure out how to even get this on YouTube. Ciao. So I just want to add this extra bit at the end here that I recorded this on 11-11-2023. The day is currently 11-12-2023 and I woke up to a notification from PlayStation where they announced Suicide Guy VR for the PlayStation VR 2. I just want to say this because I find it to be an incredible coincidence that it happened the day after I recorded the first part. That's fucking hilarious. Oh, that's actually a cool game. Wait, you're serious? Yeah, the themes and the gameplay look so incredible, and I realized that I knew you would swing around. This is awesome. It wakes me want to kill myself. Oh, come on. You can't be serious. What do you expect, Matthew? It's literally called Suicide Guy. Ain't it kind of ironic? You got a point there. Let's just take a chill pill and take a deep breath. actually worked. Really? It did? No! Let me go, you idiot! Looks like this isn't working. Hmm. <sighs> Holy shit, they gave me the perfect idea. Thank you. This is harder than I expected. Didn't want to do this, but... Hi there. One of my favorite aspects about indie video games is that a lot of them are made by small but passionate groups of people who get into making video games because they love the craft. Just people who love video games making video games. And I understand that. As an indie creator myself, I like the idea that this whole production comes from... I like having the freedom to create what I want when I want to. That is, if my ADHD allows it. When I look at indie games, I got a very similar feeling. The feeling that the game I am looking at was made from a few people who had an idea they thought would be cool. Now, I'll be one of the first to say that video games are art. And maybe in my own very incorrect interpretation of the word, I think art is any piece of thing that has been made by a human for human consumption. The most recent Call of Duty, whatever it's called, was made by humans. There's no doubt about it. But who really made this? What's their name? Why are they making it? Did they make it because they love Call of Duty? Or are they just an employee for a company that asked them to make it? It is man-made. And yet... The indie game that I want to talk about today is something that goes by the name Mr. Sleepy Man, which you probably haven't heard of considering it hasn't been released yet. There is no open beta that I've played. I'm not a friend of the creator, and it's been in development for... well, I'm not sure how long. And it will be in development for... also sure not how long, considering there is no release date planned. The game is being made by one single person. A guy by the name of Devin Santi, who has been online for quite a while creating music and animations, but from what I can see, has never made a game before. Mr. Sleepy Man is a sandbox game where you play as the titular hero Mr. Sleepy Man, who can do pretty much anything you can think of, like picking up anything you can see, annoying the residents of Bedtime Town, and platforming among the beautiful scenery. The objective of the game is a little bit vague because I haven't played it yet, but from what I can see, you have to get Mr. Sleepy Man to bed. 
And in order to do that, you need to go out and find this pillow somewhere in bedtime town. And while you do that, there are a bunch of objectives and quests that you can do along the way. It's a movement-based 3D platformer. So a lot of the game boils down to moving around the stage, doing platforming, sneaking and heisting, just in general getting into a bunch of hijinks all over Bedtime Town. And that's pretty much all I know about the game itself. Because I haven't played it myself and have only consumed this game through TikTok and a few trailers, I had to piece together what I could about this game. And even then, I'm not sure if this will be a good game. And yet... I just can't take my eyes off it. TikTok is a very interesting social media site. Despite all of its controversies and the fact that some countries even banned the platform, people still love it, myself included. It was thanks to TikTok that I first got introduced to Devin Santee and the Mr. Sleepy Man game, and because it kept showing up on my feed, I grew more and more attached to the game I've never played. Devin Santee's TikTok is a treat to go through. And not just as someone who's interested in Mr. Sleepy Man, but as a video game fan in general. In every video, he talks about something related to the development of Mr. Sleepy Man, or video game development as a whole. He goes over what his game's about, his inspirations, his creative process, slight changes he makes to the game, why he makes them, and his own feelings about his game and the struggles of creation. His entire development process is laid out for the viewers. I see his TikTok, and I get that indie development feeling. A feeling that I will never get with Call of Duty, who would never in a million years post a development log for their game. Those companies have thousands of employees that research, sample, and test different game formulas who are probably passionate about video games but are put into an environment where their passion gets stunted by their colleagues. I will never look at Call of Duty and think, wow, this is truly a piece of art because it's made by a faceless company who's in it for the cash with employees who spend a fraction of their time on a fraction of the game they make. I look at the videos that developers make about their games, like Mr. Sleepy Man or Risk of Rain, and see people who want to create an experience for players to enjoy. You can see the care put into it firsthand. You can see the art being made. It's something you can only get from indie games, from small but passionate groups of people who make games because they love the craft. And I think that's special. Matthew! Matthew, wake up! Oh. Oh, looks like that did the job. What did you do to me? I baptized you. Since there wasn't any water around, I had to use the next best thing. And look at this. It worked so well that even I ended up falling asleep. This is all completely unnecessary. I agree. I have a dinner to go to, but you're the one holding me up. I'm holding you up? You're the one who's got me tied up! Excuses, excuses, excuses. Just let me go and you can do your thing. I have to give it to you, ain't I? You're surprisingly resilient as hell. Oh, I play competitive Splatoon. What do you expect? I play Xenoblade. What does that make me? That makes you tasteless and a virgin. That explains a lot. So, I have one last game to show you. One last time to show you what you are missing. And if that doesn't work, I don't know what else will work. Untie me? No. Wait, wait, no, stop, stop, no! Ah! A few years ago, we as Little Nintendo Swines were treated to a very good indie world. It had a lot of games that I forgot about after like a minute, but one really stuck out to me as something I didn't know I was craving at the time. A Leckhead. This game got like hardly any traction when it released, and that's a shame because it is genuinely one of the better indies that I got to play this year. It's an extremely simple puzzle platformer where you electrify the platform you're standing on. It starts off with puzzles that take like hardly any thought at all, but then it eventually pulls out the big guns for puzzles that had me stumped multiple times despite its short length. Alekhead was also very obviously inspired by another game with a similar style, VVVVVV, which also didn't get nearly enough attention when it released. Back to Alekhead though, it strikes the perfect middle ground of not being mind-numbingly simple, but also making you have to sit there and decide your next moves carefully. The game only takes around 2 hours to complete, and by the time I saw the ending, all I wanted was more. Just please play a leckhead, you owe it to yourself. I think I'm paralyzed both mentally and physically. Ah, oh, don't worry. I think I'll wear off in a day or a week or so. Fuck you! I hope with all this, you can see the errors of your ways and that it, why indie games are so good. They're given the freedom to be as good and unique as they want to be. They don't have corporate management breathing down their necks. And at the end of the day, if you don't like them, that's a massive shame, and I think you're missing out on a lot. 
I'm sorry, Matthew. I'm actually willing to try out one of these indie games. Like Fairy Tale? No! I'm tired of you! This is what you get for tying me up all day! Kicking you out! Don't come back! And take it with you! Looks like I was wrong about him. Maybe there still are indie tickets who don't like indie games. But that's okay. I'll still play indie games by myself. Oh, hey, Matthew. You usually sit on Anthony's driveway? I know. I usually sit on his neighbor's driveway. Hey, what's that you got there? Oh, it's a gift I got for Anthony, but short story short, he's an indie bigot, so he threw me out. Got from my garden. Garden? I thought you lived in a desert. I got a coupon from God. I thought you were a Buddhist. I didn't like having my head shaved. You weren't a monk. Exactly. So anyway, where's our presents? About that, I just spent all my money on getting people to get some favors, and short story short, I am broke. What the hell? Jason, and I, I think you know what we ain't gotta do. Yep. No. 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 Christmas blows. It's an overpriced holiday meant for capitalism. And look at me now. I lost one of my friends, or actually all my friends, and now I'm just fucked. Fuck this. <gasps> it's a Diet Coke! And thus, that was the tale of how Matthew ruined a beautiful friendship just because he couldn't accept that his friend was simply normal. Kind of messed up there, Matt, not gonna lie. Will they ever become friends again? Who knows, I certainly don't give a fuck. Play Sea of Stars. This this isn't a request, this is a demand. Play Sea of Stars right now or else I'm you gonna come find you. Uh, and that's a promise. Longer. Play Sea of Stars right now. I'm showing you Super Monkey Ball. This indie game. Big by you.
why did I ever become friends with that freak? Like, who would actually play anime games in this day and age? Five hours later. Oh, fuck, I'm a freak who plays anime games.